Hi, everybody. I'm Blaine Gilmer, and welcome to another edition of Bulldog Illustrated's The Inside Slant. This is the Kentucky edition as the number five ranked Georgia Bulldogs head up to Lexington for an SEC matchup, SEC East matchup. And to break it all down here with me is my co-host, Veron Haynes. Veron, how you doing today, man? Man, the family and I are doing quite adequate. Adequate? What's, <laughs> what's going on with that? Always room for improvement, brother. Always room for improvement. No, 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 man, we're doing well, man. We're doing very well. But if you ever get a chance to talk to Matt Stitchcomb, listen to his answer. I got that from him. I mean, that is the best spinoff ever. Adequate. It's a good, it's a good icebreaker there to get going. But I, no, I'm glad, uh, glad you are, man. Glad you're do, doing well. Um, we do want to say before we get started here. Quite some exciting news for the the Haynes household this week, especially Georgia related, as your son Justice Haynes, twenty twenty three running back from Blessed Trinity, gets an offer from the University of Georgia, your alma mater. What's it, what's it been like at the house? It's been uh, <laughs> it's been kind of crazy, but nonetheless, he's worked hard and uh, great, great, great accomplishment, man. I'm proud of him and his journey thus far, man. It's exciting. Absolutely. We're looking to maybe maybe uh, do some talking with uh, Justice here in a minute just to see see how that uh, that offer was, what this process has been like for him. But, uh, you know, to get things started here before we can move on to Kentucky, like you said before, always room for improvement. Always room. Georgia, we got to we got to look back at the last one a little bit. And that was two weeks ago in Tuscaloosa. Um, You know, tough tough one to look tough one to look back on. huh? Exactly. A, t- a tough loss for, for Georgia, uh, not able to get over that hump against Alabama just yet. Um, but, you know, Ron just wanted to real quick over, you know, your observations over the, the loss to Alabama. I think that coach summed it up, bro. We had him on the hook. <laughs> we had him on the hook, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's green. We let, him, yeah. <laughs> we let him on the hook. No, man. Um, you know, we played solid, man. I, I'm, uh, I, I saw exactly what everybody saw, right? You, We came out and we matched their energy. I thought we responded well. We had that first uh, turnover off the first play. And, 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 and right there, I think that you, you if you go in and you score, you set the tone very well, right? But we traded punches. We went toe-to-toe. And, and obviously, we came out and we was winning in that half at, at halftime. So methodically moving the ball down the field and then it it's it, like the tail of two halves and then we it's like we stayed in the locker room i don't know what happened after that if uh the adjustments that was made by alabama team confused us some uh i thought the line did a fantastic job all night long and contrary to popular belief the quarterback was not the problem I, I I agree with you 100. percent I wrote a uh, article, uh, actually a couple articles this this past uh, you know it, over this time since the Alabama game ha- has occurred. I do a daily article over at BulldogIllustrated.com um, every day. You can go check it out over there. But I, I've written how this offense can be, and I believe is positioned for success with Stetson Bennett at quarterback. Absolutely. It's just a matter of finding continuing to find the things they do well and doing more of that. And well, I'm- we have three monstrous running backs. Each one of them do has unique skills. And I, I, I think, honestly, with our line, the way that they've been blocking, bar none, the best in, uh, that I've seen this year. Absolutely. So I think we, we have to find a way to – and we'll get into that whenever we talk about Kentucky. But getting back to our meat and potatoes, RBU, baby. Absolutely. And I think that leads into your uh, dog bone helmet sticker. I'm going to put it across the bottom of the screen here. First, offensively, uh, I think you had you had two players kind of that tied for you for your dog bone helmet yeah, sticker. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I mean, you, you, look at, you look at Richard, man, and he comes out, he has – Three solo tackles, five total, and one INT. That first pick, I thought, was 
the the first play of the game that set the tone and 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 gave us the energy that we needed and and took the win out of their sails for us for for a little bit for a short time there and and gave us some momentum. Um, we didn't capitalize too long on that, but it, it definitely right there let everyone know that we were here to play. So he gets a dog bone. He played his 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 butt off all night, and 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 James. I mean, what can you say, man? Eighty two yard pass. Uh, I mean, he 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 was there all night long, um, just making plays when we needed it. Absolutely, you know, uh, Richard LeCount not only making tremendous plays on the field um, and has played great over the the last five or six games for Georgia that he's played in, going all the way to the end of last season, but he's also a leader off the field. He was, you know, kind of rallying the team uh, in the week in the bye week after and saying, "Listen, they were excited about." The opportunity to get better and 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 you know improve on that and then of course James Cook like you said had a had his most explosive most complete game as a Georgia Bulldog um, and that's that's something that the dogs definitely want to continue to find ways to get him the ball and capitalize on that um, you touched on it a little bit earlier my dog bone helmet sticker for this week is going to go to collectively to the Georgia offensive line uh, I thought that. They protected really well. Really, the sacks that uh, occurred, there were two sacks, and I think both of those were on Stetson Bennett. That is something he's got to uh, learn to do just a little bit better. You know, when you're playing elite teams. a couple of times. Elite teams, you know, you can't yeah. just hold on the ball. You got to yeah. get rid of it. Um, which he hadn't done a, t- a ton of that to his defense. Right. That was that was a big, first big-time true huge atmosphere uh on the road for him so um you know i'm sure there'll be improvement there but georgia always pass protects extremely well and you know warren mcclendon ben cleveland on that right side of the offensive line are playing Stunt. Stunt. unbelievable Lights football out. right now um, and you know i and, think you could run behind those guys hey listen the old I four my old behind can run behind. old four nine five forty may have may be able to pick a pick a yard or two out of that <laughs> no, but uh uh i i really think that um you know they were if you take away the sack yard of georgia when they were handing the ball to ball carriers 28 carries 5.7 yards a carry on those 28 carries the problem was 28 carries 40 pass attempts that that can't be out of kilter for Georgia. Um, I think you know Todd Monk and everybody else uh, knows that, but it was just a byproduct of some of the game. But I think you don't see another game this year where Georgia has less carries than they do pass attempts. I think well, well, it just, it just depends, ball. right? It, it, and it is a feel like you get into a game, and we had this happen in high school, and we look up. And I, I had no idea Justice had 39 carries because I would have definitely <laughs> nixed that, right? But hey. it was just one of those games. And hopefully we don't have that. That means that uh, Georgia is methodically moving the ball down the field and we're controlling the time of scrimmage, uh, the, the time of possession. But it also means that we have a good lead. Absolutely. If you're running the, running the ball and uh, doing, it at a, um, doing it at a good clip, Usually things are going pretty pretty well for you, and it, and it also doesn't doesn't hurt you when you have a quarterback who you know is obviously he's been around Georgia for a while, but he's still lacking a little bit of in the experience column. Um, now before we uh, get on to Kentucky, I want to um, you know take a second to let you talk about an organization that you're involved with here, Vanquish Elite, uh, guys. Uh, take a second just to listen to Veron here. Tell us about Vanquish Elite and what you guys do. So we're brothers. We're a Masonic group, and we give back to the community. We underprivileged kids, and we really tried to do our part in helping. Last year, we were very fortunate to provide care to three members of Forest Park High School that uh, we sent them to college and, 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 and that was such a blessing, you know, and we try to do that as much as we can and get out here and just, you know, do our part in, in charitable work. Absolutely. And just like it's spelled on the screen there, vanquishelite.com. You can go there, find all the information. There's a there's a link on there to to donate. Uh so donate, you know, see what you can do. There's they they have golf tournaments, all kinds of stuff. So uh, go to vanquishelite.com and see what you can do to to help out the cause. And when the when we do have the date for the golf tournament, I will definitely post it and 
it's a bunch of bulldogs come out high. I'm bored, I believe. Yeah, you 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 got a Robert Edwards, Marcus Stroud, Richard C. It's a bunch of guys that come out and give their time, and I, I and, and I'm thankful for that. Absolutely. Uh, you know, so check it out, vanquishelite.com, uh, and you can be a part of that. Now, um, Veron, you know, getting to Kentucky here. Uh, obviously, Kentucky coming off a, a tough loss to Missouri. They lost uh, 20, 20 to 10. They've, they've lost to Ole Miss uh, earlier this year in a, in a shootout. So they had a defensive game against uh, Ole Miss, you know, 20 to 10, where they only ran 36 plays and got killed on time of possession. And then, of course, they had a shootout with the lane train over there and Ole Miss, which that's a whole nother thing in, 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 in itself you could talk about. But uh, just give me, you know, going into this Kentucky game, first first impressions of, of Kentucky as a team and kind of what, what you think this game, how it, how it sets up. Well, I think you and I talked off air about this. Strange things seem to happen when we play up there in, in Kentucky, right? So it's, it's definitely they're, – they're a good team. Um, they're in the SEC, so there's no easy games. Um, if we get back to doing what we do best, which is methodically moving the ball – don't turn it over, controlling the time of possession, and playing stellar defense like we have been. I think we win this game. Yeah, you know, it, it's gonna it's two teams that really kind of pattern themselves in the same fashion. Uh, yeah. I know that I know that uh, there's been a couple of times this year where Kentucky has given up some points, but mm-hmm. Mark Stoops and Kirby Smart are kind of cut from the same cloth. They're defensive coaches that want to have a, a hard-nosed football team. And uh, sometimes, stylistically, when you play a team that is a lot like you, that can be a tough matchup. Whether Lane, whether make no mistake team. about it. It has been echoed throughout that locker room in, on that bye week that we are going to get back to doing what we do, and that is tough SOBs out there, have, flying around having fun. And 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 I think we're gonna go have an opportunity to see us play our best game thus far. Absolutely. So, uh, and you talked about the the three backs before. Um, for you, any anybody in particular kind of sticking out? A, a dude, I love Milton. Dude, I, I I've right. been talking about, I've been raving about this guy for quite some time now, and I'm ready to see him get some quality touches. Right, he's a big, strong, physical downhill runner, but he's also got the pass catching abilities. He's elusive. He gives you that Nick Chubb slash Sloney style. I'm I'm excited about this guy. Absolutely, a lot of people are are really really high on on Kendall Milton. Some of the stuff I've gathered from uh, you know around the program uh, sources that I have are, say that that is not just an external feeling uh the, i think georgia themselves it, it really feels that they have something special there in kendall yeah. milton um one thing that i think you know in terms of keys to the game obviously you're uh kind of saying that um you need to think georgia needs to get back to running running the football and yeah. uh, and making making things happen i i personally think the keys for the game to me is as kentucky has two huge guys in the middle they have phil hoskins who uh, is you know 315 pounds, and they got Marquand McCall, who's 379 pounds in the middle. So before you can run that ball with Kendall Minton, I think you got to get them going side to side a little bit, utilizing that screen game a little bit. I I definitely believe in the screen game. What is the screen? A long handoff, right? And and you do those 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 screen passes, and I think you get Stetson in a in a in a rhythm, and then. Ooh, soften him up a little bit and then take a shot or two with 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 my guy with my guys absolutely and we uh we have a, with my a character of a guy we have a special guest coming on here in just a minute but before we bring him on i want to real quick we always do it every week veron what's your uh prediction for the score uh score this week man it's not even gonna be cute it's I, i'm i'm predicting 44 i'm giving them three 44 to 3. Statement win. You hear it, Veron? 44 to 3. Coming off a bye week, I, I, man, fresh legs. Let's go. George is a 15 point favorite. Uh, I'm going to say Kentucky plays tough defense to start off with just because Mark uh, Stoops is a, is a tremendous coach. I'm going to say Georgia uh, ends up 38 to 
seventeen. I think thirty-eight seventeen is going to give uh, the give give that to Kentucky to start off with, but.